where business ideas and passions turn into profit. Napkin ideas are no longer tucked away in drawers, and women around the globe are turning their hobbies into million-dollar businesses. Welcome to Million Dollar Hobbies. Here's your host, world-renowned jewelry designer and Shop HQ celebrity, Victoria Wick. Welcome to another episode of the Million Dollar Hobbies podcast. I want to talk today about what the top reasons, top five reasons why entrepreneurs fail or the top five reasons why startups fail specifically. But before we get to that, uh, I would love for you to uh, sub, you know, hit the subscribe button if you're watching me on YouTube. And also, if you can share it, that would be great for you, uh, whoever you're sharing with, uh, as well as for this show. So without further ado, let's get into the um, the failure rate of of ninety percent. So startups fail at a alarming rate of ninety percent. To me, there's really no re- no good reason why ninety uh, percent of startups fail. So I decided to look into why they fail. So uh, you know, I mean, there are just my rate of reasons, but I'm just going to focus on the fi- top five, the big five, uh, why they fail. So. And I'm going to just quickly go over them, and then I will, um, you know, sort of do a deep dive on each of the five. The first one is unrealistic expectations. The second is failing to make connection with their target audience. Third is trying to do too much. And we all know what that feels like. Fourth, sacrificing quality for quantity. And then lastly, it's self-doubt. Uh, the self-doubt uh, you know, doubt seeps into uh, all of our lives, not just our business lives. So let's get back to these five. Um, and I you know, kind of uh, did a poll of a lot of the small businesses that are no longer with us. And I've also done uh, you know, sort of analysis of published reports about small businesses that failed. And I can relate to all five um, myself because I've been through all of that. I'm very blessed that I have actually survived uh, these in these five things in the very beginning stages of my journey as an entrepreneur, as a businesswoman. And uh, so let's go into this. Um, First of all, the unrealistic expectations. I would say that, um, you know, if you, and this is very easy to do because if you're an entrepreneur, and uh, you're so excited about something you've come up with, then, you know, how many times have we heard people say something like, oh, my God, there's nothing else like it out there, or like, just wait till I open my business and, you know, or wait till my I get my patent. And it's just going to be, it's going to just be like, you know, sell all by itself and all that. So those are really unex, uh, unrealistic expectations, because I have seen in my 24-year career on TV, as well, and I, I'm, let me tell you, a lot of those businesses, 99% of the businesses that go, you know, products that go on TV actually fail. I mean, on TV, the failure rate is like 99%. So, and a lot of them have great products. I mean, things that actually solve our lives, things that solve our problems, uh, but they didn't do a great job of, you know, marketing themselves. People didn't know what, if something is so revolutionary, you actually have to educate people that that it that it actually does all the things that it does and so unrealistic expectations where you think that all you have to do is get enough money together and you're going to have to get your patent all that stuff and then you know once you open your business you know everything is going to be like a smooth sailing that's very very uh simple I mean, it's it's one of the main reasons why a lot of businesses fail. They haven't worked out all the other aspects of, you know, educating your customer, how to find your customer, how to find the right price point, um, and how to sort of deliver that customer uh, expectations and experience and continue to follow up. And, you know, because you're going to need more than your family and friends and your classmates or your, uh, you know, the girlfriends at your country club to buy your things. I mean, you're going to need... Um, hundreds, thousands, uh, maybe millions of people buying your products if you're going to be successful. So uh, make sure that your expectations are kind of measured with um, the market reality. (laughs) Okay. And then the second reason is failing to make a connection with their target audience. And this is a big one because a lot of small businesses, you know, the biggest problem is that um, a lot of small businesses identify their target market as much bigger than what they really are. 
So for example, when I started my business, um, and I, I actually suffered from this very thing in that when I first started my business, I thought my target market was all women because you know I designed jewelry and I designed beautiful jewelry. And I thought like I was a pretty talented designer. And I felt that in fact, I didn't feel that. I knew that most women like jewelry. In fact, most men actually buy jewelry of some kind for their significant other, for their mothers, for their sisters, for their you know uh, people who work for them. I mean, so I thought the market was everybody, and that's a huge mistake. So I would say that um, find your target market people. You know, in my case, my jewelry, I ended up uh, designing a jewelry line for specifically for professional women to wear my jewelry as an expression of, um, you know, who they are, a little bit of their personality, but for workplace during the day. So it's a little bit more casual, a little bit more professional and a little bit more, um, you know, toned down version of the, the nighttime fancy jewelry. So make a connection with your target audience. I mean, you're going to need thousands, hundreds and thousands and hundreds of thousands of people that's going to fall in love with you, your company, your team, your product, your um, customer experience that you deliver. So make sure that you understand this, that, you know, it's not like I love my products. Um, I mean, products that, that sell themselves, it solves everybody's problems. So I'm going to put it out there and, you know, um, a customer going to just flock to them. That's actually not true. You have to go out and get your customers. You have to, because, you know, there, you may, you may not realize this, but for example, like jewelry, when I'm selling jewelry, you might think that, I'm competing with uh, a lot of other jewelers. I am, but I'm also competing with a lot of other luxury goods. So if, for example, um, you know, so, uh, you wanted to get a, um, a Mother's Day present and you wanted to get like your mother a heart, you know, fine, like a heart diamond or something. Well, you know, if you don't, she, the, the consumer has a choice of buying that or buying your mother a vacation or buying her a, you know, a really nice um, practical you know, handbag. There's all these other things that's not even in your category that's fighting for the same dollars. So make sure that um, you make that incredible connection with your audience, you know, with your target audience, because you want these people to love you so much. You want these people to be borderline fanatic about you so that they love the product they tell about your product, about you to everybody else that they know. And that's how you're going to grow your business. So that second one is a really big one. And then the third one, uh, if you remember, is trying to do too much. So what does that mean? I mean, you know, all small business owners go through this at one point or another. You know, you're already doing too much on the back end. So in, in the, uh, on, your, on your side of the business, you know, you're the chief um, Obviously, you're the CEO of your company, but you're also the chief uh, lawyer, chief finance officer, chief customer service person, chief shipping person, because you're in charge of all of that. So don't try to do all of those things and lose sight of the fact that you need, you know, a great product, you need a great product line, you need to figure out how to get millions of people to love you, fall in love with you. So now on the other side, on the customer side, you know, you may want to please your customer so much that you're going to end up doing too much for her. For example, if you are, um, let's say, a coach that teaches other coaches on how to get leads, um, how to convert those leads, focus on that. Focus on uh, generating leads, converting those leads. And that's enough because if you start to say, you know, I do Facebook ads, I'm a marketing agency, I teach you how to get leads, I teach you how to convert, I teach you how to close, I teach you how to, you know, do your products, I teach you how to do your marketing. You are now getting into like 18 different, um, you know, areas of specialties that other people could do more. So if all you do is help people to generate leads, and you really have that emotional connection, you know, understanding how to get those leads, then focus on that. If you are, let's say, um, you know, a hairdresser, and uh, you have a salon, and you are specializing in, you know, uh, hair care, hair salon, and you're doing, you know, colors, you're doing cuts, you're doing blow dry, you know, don't go and sell like, you know, oh, you know, our, I have all the our customers are this or that. So I've got a whole line of yoga clothes, because um, that's a whole different category of uh, service. And not all yoga people would actually 
you know, love a hair salon, you know, we go to a hair salon to buy stuff. So it's not their core thing. Um, same thing if you are, um, I recently heard someone um, ask me um, what I thought about, you know, this person was, I do a lot of mentorships, by the way. And, you know, young kid, and he really loved books. He, he loved uh, quirky books, a lot of books that the, the big stores like Barnes and Nobles don't carry. And he also liked the idea of offering people like a real book cover, something they could hand, you know, like, so it was always going to be a small market anyway, but he thought, well, you know what? I want to offer people coffee, you know, when they're shopping, kind of like a lot of the Barnes and Nobles actually have like a Starbucks inside. And um, while they're there, if I offer like a little mini finger sandwiches, yogurt, you know, something like that, they might actually stay longer and buy more things. Well, again, like you're going into all these, you're trying to do too much. So focus on what you do well and just make sure that you do that better than anybody else. And um, so that trying to, to, to do too much, offering too many services that you're not an expert in, that actually is a real, um, I would say, quick path to destruction. And then the fourth one is kind of a big one too. And that one is sacrificing quality for quantity. And, um, you know, a lot of us do this, you know, quite like we go buy things on sale and, you know, there's always like, um, I know, you know, for, excuse me, but like you go to Victoria's Secrets and they'll have, um, you know, five panties for a price of like, you know, 25. I don't know if you know this, but if you bought just the one, you could, so, you know, most of us will just go and pick, you pick three and you're like, oh, it's cheaper to do um, the two other ones. So you, you, you know, even though you didn't really love the other two, you buy it. Would it be better off? Would you be better off buying one or two that you really love um, for, you know, like seven bucks or 10 bucks a piece? I don't know. I mean, you, you'd be the judge of that, but a lot of times as business owners, we want to save money. We want to save our customers money. So if you can't see, I mean, are they going to pay for, you know, a premium, premium, premium quality soap for 20 bucks? Well, we don't know. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to, I mean, if the, you don't want to downgrade uh, for just for the price point. So a lot of times, you know, you might go, oh, you know, um, people can buy, um, you know, Prell soap or I don't know, dial soap for $2. So, you know, if I have organic soaps that have no wax, you know, no glycerin, no, no this or no that, and it's all pure soap that's going to last you a year, for example, I'm just making things out of the top of my head. That Would they pay more? Would they pay eight bucks for it? Would they pay for 10? Probably. So again, think about um, the quality versus quantity. And by the way, this also goes with everything like social media, you know, people are buying bots so that they could have supposedly like, uh, you know, 5,000 followers when they actually only have 500, you know, having bots to uh, make you look like you have more social media following doesn't actually generate in sales, none whatsoever. So you're better off um, having only like a thousand people who really love, uh, if you're into the organic soap thing, for example, who really love things that are organic, that are earthy. Um, you just want to have, have a hardcore following of people that really matter to you and to your business and to your main philosophy, to your mission. So whether it's that's social media, prices, actual products, or even quality of your customers. I mean, if you offer like a 50% off coupon and you're looking at these people who do nothing but coupon, you know, uh, shopping uh, from place to place to place, they come to your store because of a coupon and they will leave your store because somebody else's coupon. So make sure that you understand that quality always triumphs over quantity. Okay. So in the long run, that's the only thing that really matters. So, um, and then that we come to the last point, which is self-doubt. A lot of times, we as entrepreneurs, you know, you have to go out and create wealth, create a paycheck for yourself, for your employees, for your vendors. And it's kind of scary. You know, you got to do that every single day. And um, many entrepreneurs put, you know, pretty much their heart and soul and everything on the line every day. So it is a very scary thing. And self-doubt can seep in at any point, uh, even when you're at the high, you're like, oh my God, how do I protect this uh, success that I just have? Or sometimes when things are taking longer, you might go, you know, I wonder if this is the end. I wonder if this is the beginning of the end. 
Um, I understand how that feels because I've been at both ends of the spectrum and that's normal and it's natural. And it's sometimes it's actually healthy for you because it makes you think about things. It makes you go through it one more time. But understand this, if you're, in, if you're listening to me right now and you already have a business and any part of this, um, you know, the top one, two, three, four has resonated with you. I want to say you are more than enough. You have everything you need to succeed. Just make sure that, you know, you're not going to ever get rid of self-doubt because I think it is kind of natural and is healthy. But understand that without making decisions that you, you can be confident about, you're never going to have a great business. So, and how do you then get the confidence? You get that confidence by, you know, sort of the top four, you know, making sure that you're, um, if you thought, oh my God, you know, um, all I have to do is get a patent, you know, and all I have to do is just put it out there and, you know, people are going to just flock to my thing. Well, and, and people aren't flocking because people aren't supposed to flock to you just because you, you have a patent and you, you, you opened your store. Again, those types of things, when you have your ex expectation checked, so you know, for example, no matter what I do, I'm going to have to build my following. I'm going to have to build my business. I'm going to have to build that trust. I'm going to have to build that respect. And I'm willing to do, you know, uh, so many hours a day to get that, to, to build a respect, build a trust, you know, trust level with my customers. And I'm willing to do these six things. Then when those things come in, you know, it trickle in, you're not self-doubting because you're actually following a plan. So again, the whole self-doubt thing, um, I could do a whole other episode on that, but it is natural. It is manageable. And, um, and today's lesson wasn't supposed to be about like just fixing all of this, but I just want you to be aware of that because many of you who are listening to my show, um, I understand that about 50% of you are already um, owning a business and some of, the, some of you are already quite successful and you want to get to, you know, from six figures onto the seven figures. And then I have about 40% of you who are making money for your companies, your employees, and you uh, ha have some side hustle already but you haven't been able to take that into like a main business. So, and you're, you're like still doubting in year three or four of your side hustle, you're still doubting, you know, whether or not I could, you could take a leap of faith and, you know, have a reasonable uh, reason to expect that you're successful. So are those of you who are considering right now to um, start your own or not, and you, you're looking at that 90% failure number and you're like, oh my God, like, should I, or shouldn't I? I just wanted to give you a glimpse of the top reasons why people fail. And if you think that you can you know, handle any uh, of these top four, um, top five reasons people fail, I think that you're, um, you know, you're going to be that top 10% of people that actually do succeed and um, stay on course. So I hope you enjoyed uh, today's uh, episode. And I hope to do more of these you know, little mini uh, lessons that I've learned because I, I really hope that this will help you in your journey, at least make a decision or clarify something that you didn't know. So thank you so much again for listening to uh, this episode and all the other episodes as well. And also thank you for being so loyal coming here. And many of you, um, and by the way, if you can, please give me a review because a lot of people don't know how to write a review. Apple does make it kind of difficult to write that review. Um, you got to go all the way down to the end after you listen to the episode. And then there was like a, uh, you know, like a five star or you, you don't have to give me a five star, just, just be honest. And then actually write how this episode could help someone else who is struggling with the same kind of thing. So if you can do that, I would be very grateful. And again, with gratitude, I sign off today. So remember until next week, um, please stay healthy and happy. And remember, happiness is a choice. And uh, I wish you all the best this week. Thank you. You've been listening to Million Dollar Hobbies, where we turn dreams into reality and passion into profit. According to ancient Chinese proverb, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Congratulations on taking that first step today. For more information on how Victoria can help you turn your hobby into a million dollars and to download Victoria's free ebook on passion-based business ideas, visit milliondollarhobbies.com. 
And don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the show on your favorite podcast player.